Hello everybody, sorry about the little technical uh, delay there. Um, we're just going to let me finish off getting everything sorted out and we shall get underway. Alright, so my name's Corey Anderson, I am a Customer Success Manager with Reckon. Uh, today's webinar we're looking at Reckon One Core Module. So just a little bit of housekeeping before we do get underway, first of all is just the audio option. So everyone is muted to make it a better experience for everyone. Um, so you're connected automatically through your computer speakers. You do have the uh, uh, option to dial in if uh, required as well too. Um, now, if there's a sound check, if you do have any troubles, there's a sound check in there as well. And as for any questions or anything else, we're not using the questions or the chat within GoToWebinar. Uh, They're not going to be monitored, so please don't use them at all. Uh, instead, we're going to be using a different tool called Slido, uh, accessible via slido.com. Uh, just you go to slido.com, you put in the event code of R1 Core, so Reckon One Core, R1 Core, click join and you can type your question or comment or anything in there. Um, the reason we do this, it's a better experience for everyone. We can see the questions that need to be asked on the screen as well too and easier to monitor. Nothing to join, nothing to download or anything. You just put in the code and then off we go with that. And that GoTo panel as well for GoTo webinar. if that gets in your way at all, just click the little orange arrow, it disappears off to the side of your screen. Um, you can bring it back at any time if uh, need be as well too. So just be aware of, uh, aware of that as well. Just a disclaimer before I do get underway, the contents of this video is of a general nature and is for guidance only. Reckon does not provide professional or taxation advice and viewers should consult with um, professional advisor or in your case because I'm, I'm talking with a lot of partners and with all partners and cloud advisors and bookkeepers and accountants um, consult with your professional body and, and your peers as well on that um, that one there so the reckon one core module so what does it involve so reckon one is made up of seven modules and in the webinar series we're covering off the the main ones that we find our partners, so our accountants, our bookkeepers, so whether they're a professional partner, a creditor partner, or a um, cloud advisor, which is our free program. We're finding that we want to go, go through and just do webinars based on those for core payroll and the bank data one. So that's what we're focusing there. Um, so just going, I'm looking at core today. So what is Reckon One Core? So this is where we can create the book from scratch. So it is a minimum for most of the modules in Reckon One. Uh, there's two that don't need the Reckon One core. So that's the payroll module, we can have standalone payroll, and also the expenses module is available as a standalone as well too. Um, administration and setup. So it's your basic setup and get everything started. You can have unlimited number of users in core. Um, you can set up all the roles, payments, and retract receipts. So this is your manual spend money, uh, make payment sort of thing. You can import bank statements. So it's not bank seeds. That's a different thing again. It's just being able to import bank statements. You can create budgets. You can do the reporting. Uh, you've got BAS and GST as well in there too. Um, it's a perfect for sort of those very the small manual sort of um, small businesses where shoeboxes, uh, a lot of investment trust, rental properties, even ones that might be using a different sort of uh, system for their invoicing and that sort of thing. Uh, they've got a proprietary system. This one's perfect as well for them, uh, just using the core one there. It's $7 a month uh, for core. Now, just a, just a, a step away from that, as I said, uh, we're not using the questions or anything within the um, go-to webinar at all. We're using slido.com. And you'll notice at the bottom of these these couple of slides here, we've got that uh, question, slido.com, event code R1 core. And that'll come up at the end of the session as well too. I'm gonna spend most of today actually looking around and playing in the software and then have about 15, 10 minutes, depending on how we go, of questions to finish up at two o'clock. Um, Melbourne time, of course, so adjusted accordingly if you're over in SA or NT or WA, of course. So I'm going 
going to jump over into the software. Now, if you don't have a Reckon One, a Reckon Portal account, so Reckon Portal is where we where all our cloud products sit, except for hosted, uh, free to sign up to. Uh, I'm logging in. I've, um, traditionally, a username and um, is your email address. I've just got an ancient account here. And when I go into the portal, I can see my products on the left hand side. So this is where our Reckon One product sits, our Cloud Pause, Reckon Gov Connect for single touch payroll, which is covered in the payroll webinar. The available other available products we've got is our Better Clinics and Better Bookings and Reckon Loans uh, as well too. Now, what I'm going to look at now is how do we actually create that book that is just core? So as, I, as all, everyone on the call today or the webinar today is a accountant or a bookkeeper, so one of our professional partners, accredited partners um, and so forth, um, we want to use the partners area. Now, if you come to the partners area and it prompts you with a, a sign up, so this is where as an accountant or the bookkeeper, you can sign up for our free uh, Cloud Advisor program. I click on add a client and I pop in their email address. Uh, I'm just going to use any old email address. That one will do me. So if they, what that's doing is it's associated that it's already got an account on the Reckon portal. So therefore it's knowing all that information. If it's a brand new client, never touched it before, then they will, you'll need to fill that information in. The account is the billing client. So it's not really, it's who you want to attach it to sort of thing. So I might have Corey Anderson, a company, and then I might have ABC nominees and the Smith Family Trust, that sort of thing in uh, there. Um, fill out the details. Then we've got the option here if my client will purchase or ma manage their subscription, or I will purchase and manage the subscription on my client's behalf. So I've got those two options there. And this is why using the partners area for for you guys is a great way to do it because you're choosing who's going to pay for it and who's going to look after it all. At any point in time, you can transfer that ownership later. Uh, so if you pay for it initially and then want your client to pay, we can change that later on. Um, if your client is paying for it, they'll get prompts to put in their credit card details and uh, accept the book. They have to accept it before it can be charged and, and off they go. I'm choosing whether I'm creating a Reckon One book or Cloud Pause, as we are doing Reckon One. Let's choose that. Then we're going to give it a name. So let's just call it ABC Nominees, for example. And I can choose the type. So I've got all the company, other, personal. So that's giving us a, a personal chart of accounts in there. A partnership, sole trader, and a trust. So I'll choose a company. When do I want that first transaction to be? So I'm going to go 1 July 20, 2019, so back at the start of this financial year. You can go back further if you want to do, say, 1 July 18, you want to put in last year's comparative figures for reports and that sort of thing. So it gives you that flexibility. That can be changed at a later date within the book, um, but you can only go, you can't go forward, you can only go backwards sort of thing. Financial year start date, always going to be, it always defaults to 1 July, um, but of course, if need be, it can be altered. And register the GST or VAT because we are in the UK with Reckon 1, of course. So register for GST. This one I do want to tick because I do want to cover off some BAS stuff today as well. So then it's time to mix and match. So you're mixing and matching which of the seven modules that you want. Core is always selected by default, $7 a month, and you can add the others as you need throughout the month. It is month by month, so you can choose, add whatever as you need. There is that what's included, which was what we saw a little moment ago when I first started of what's available within uh, that. So I come down here, $7 a month, and check out, and it then charges onto my card because I'm paying for that one. And then I can go and start that setup of the book. So I've got one that I've already created here that I'm going to, to use today. That's the Flintstone Investment Trust. I'm going to use that as my um, sample one here. But just before I go and jump into that, I want to take you through some other stuff around core. So, sorry, around the portal. So the portal is our hub for everything. So if you've got multiple staff within your business, you want them to have access to a book or different books that you might have, um, clients that you look after, 
then we want them to be able to come in here and we want to assign that give them access so under the account on the left hand side we've got staff and this is where I can add a staff member into this one so if I click on add staff and I'll use my email address I used just a moment ago and I choose the role they have within the portal so this is their portal role so whether they're um, admin or a user so it's whether they can add, admin gives you the ability to uh, add new clients sorry add new staff members um, within there that's the main thing and, and choosing the permissions or the roles within each app uh, each book I should say so add that person on and then I've got the different um, different books that I've got there so I then choose from there no assigned permission so if I want to give them access to the, this one I can I can choose the level of the uh, permissions in there when I go into a book in a, in a little uh, moment we'll actually see how these permissions or these roles are all set up in a bigger way so now that that person they've got access to the Flintstone Investment Trust but not any of the other books in there they might see them but they won't actually be able to access them so it is quite good so if someone does actually leave a firm it's very easy to come into here and just click on the dot remove or if you need to add other books you can just application permissions so you can change that around some other things that we've just got available in here just as, as a main person on the portal if you're not overly familiar with the uh, portal so the my accountant is just where the credit card um, details are so the, the main person who set up the portal this is where all that information is we've got the add product where we've got a shortcut the way to reckon one cloud pause gov connect notifications uh, suggest a feature or improvement it takes our help uh, which takes you onto the help site which is a great way great resource for things and as you can see we've got some articles up there around the job keeper already and your profile so if you need to change an email address or your details or your password something like that you've got that ability to do with it within uh, the portal there well within my profile there is also a demo book to play around with at any time that you want we can easily search you can change the view whether it's a list view or tile view so let's open up the Flintstone Investment Trust so as I say uh, I've already got this credit so first of all I'm going to see my dashboard so dashboard showing me key information and the dashboard is customizable it's also user dependent so depending on that user's access depending on what they can actually see uh, within here as well so we've got things like top income net position top customers if I customize that I can also add bank account top expenses top suppliers for example and as you got other uh, get other modules on you get more things you can do within uh, within there so if I add those on they're all appearing down here and I can very easily shuffle them around uh, as well too so if I wanted to drag that up for example with something like a net position um, well this will fill out a little bit more you can see on the ghosting behind that as I get data in it's going to go through and add more we can change that view so whether we want it on a um, line view or the pie graph and we can customize what we want to see with the comparison period so I can have three different com um, periods comparing each other there now I'll circle back the dashboard once I've got a little bit of information in as well too so on the left hand side we've got our day-to-day -day menu this is where all the functionality is receive money make payment the chart of accounts items journals statements um, statements only work with the invoices so just do ignore that on the course side banking so we've still got our full banking uh, suite available you just don't have the ability of having direct feeds coming through later on I'll come back and I'll talk about reporting and budgets and of course contacts as we go through um, tax as well too with the BAS at the top I've got my quick ads so I can quickly go to receive money journals transfer money I've got my email history which shows me the history of emails that have been sent from here um, help and I've got my administration cog and there's also a search function as well too so if I look here under this let's go to settings first of all 
So my settings are, broke, are, are being condensed if you've got big books with other stuff in there, because uh, I don't have payroll, I don't have other things, it is a more condensed version of this. So first of all, I need to start with my book settings and I need to complete this, uh, this setup in here. Um, so my setup, this should be a trust and I need some sort of email address in here because you can see it is a required field and I might just call that uh, who they're being sent from. So let's just Flintstone Investments. So, and then further down, we've got our general details. So first of all, oh, with the general details, it's who you want the the company name, or the it's really the the book name. So company, of course, is the the generic way of calling everything. Um, legal name. So you might have this this as Flintstone Investments. That's what you want to appear on uh, on things. But of course, we're not um, in this case. We're not doing invoicing and that sort of thing. So it's not actually going to show anywhere. Uh, put in the ABN and any branch if applicable as well too. Um, Let's just uh, add in the details. With the address. So I've also got the ability to copy the physical address. And what that does is when I click that, it copies that address over to the physical address. And then I can fill in my contact details as well. Oops. I can add Fred's email address in there. So one thing I did forget to mention just before I close out of this, just under the book name up the top here, I have got the start date. So if I need to change that, I can do that. Um, if, I, if I got that wrong when I first did it there and I can lock it off with periods as well too. So click on save. All right. Let's just go back to the book settings after that has saved. All right, come on. All right, back on the main settings screen, let's go to report settings. So the report settings is where I'm choosing whether I'm my reports to default on a cash or accruals basis. Uh, being the accountant that I am, I always like all my reports showing on an accruals basis. So I can change the BAS, the BAT separate. Um, I can change the it on individual reports as well. Um, and I want the time and date stamp. Agent reports not applicable here. I can add different text and header and footer added disclaimer so forth in there if I want to. The next one along is just the email settings. Yep, so email settings, it's just where what I have coming out is like a BAS if I'm emailing this um, to someone. So your client emails it to you to have a look at. Uh, they can. It's got a default subject in there. Same with TPAR as well. So I can easily add that. It is nice, to, um, I do like to sometimes use the BCC, so to put myself in there. So because when I'm emailing something, it, yes, it goes in the email history here, but it doesn't hit the sent items in my Outlook. So it just gives me a record that I've, of somewhere else that it's gone through uh, within there. Um, the classifications, it allows you to use uh, classifications so you can have different uh, uh, classes for uh, income and expenses sort of thing. So you might have property A, property B sort of thing. You can do add the classes onto that if you want as well. It's just a matter of clicking on the classifications um, and just adding a brand new one, whatever you want to call the name, name, description, status, if it's a default class. Now I promise you that I'll come back and have a look at roles a little bit later on. Uh, so roles, it's just a matter of we've got a number of these created by default. So administrator, employee, limited, payroll, super user support. The employees are relevant when you've just got core on because they've only got access to timesheets and expenses and well, we don't have that in this area, so that's fine. 
uh, limited. Uh, they've got view only access on the book, payroll administrator, again, payroll only, not relevant, uh, super user and support. So super user is one, they can do everything, but they just can't edit other, um, other users in there. If I look at this one in here, you can see it's very granular. If you're familiar with Reckon Accounts, um, both desktop and hosted, uh, then that's where we've taken the roles from, that that granular ability in there, and you can really pick and choose what you want someone to do. So you can turn off um, that ability to, um, some people will turn off the ability to actually allocate bank transactions to an end user. They'll just make them, give them view access only. So it is, I can duplicate it. Uh, as well too. So if I want to create a, uh, that role again, um, I can easily do that without having to re redo, the, um, redo the whole role. So it does make life a little bit easier. I've also got the uh, ability with any roles that I do create, um, I can't do it Can't do it because I haven't created a role within here. I can copy to other books as well too. So if I've created a role that I like, might be my end user role, I can copy that to other books. So I don't have to recreate that each and every time. And the final thing in that general area is just the users, just shows you the users that are in that book. The users have to be added back at that staff that I, that I did at the first part of the of the session. Okay, default bank account. Apologies about the pop up. Default bank account. Um, we create a bank, one called my bank account and uh, petty cash by default. Um, so then therefore they're already there. You can rename them and that, and I'll show you that in a moment. So I've created a beef default bank account for my money in. And I've got a default bank account for my money out as well too. So when I'm adding those in, I've got that in there. Um, view history, you'll see this in a lot of places. It's just a little, who's been in there and made any adjustments uh, to, See that so it gives you that audit trail of everything that's happened. Settings, let's go and have a look at the tax settings now. Uh, I've got my because I ticked the box that I'm registered for tax. Yes, I've got my reporting basis for my BAS as cash, which is different to my reporting for my PL and everything, which is an accrual. Um, these last few here allowing users to edit tax amounts that means you're overriding. So if you've got your insurance that's um, say $1,100, but the GST is actually $90. You can then manually override that. Uh, up to you whether you want to do that or not. But then this other one is choose if amounts include tax. So if you're doing a journal, and I'll show you a journal shortly, it allows you to choose, is this a gross journal, non-tax journal, or a net journal? So I do like to have that picked because um, then I can choose that. It's not choosing GST codes. We're always going to lead do that. But this just allows you to choose um, when you're doing a transaction, what it might be. Okay, save that. And the next thing along is the BAS details. So my BAS details is how I want my BAS to look. I do a quarterly, you've got different options there, monthly, quarterly or annual. You can choose simpler BAS if required and what taxes apply uh, to your business, you can choose those if required. Next thing along is just the tax codes and groups. A lot of you are probably familiar with um, these, the same as what we're using in our Reckon Accounts products. Uh, so they're just there, you can add others if you need to. It just gives you that ability there. Last thing just down the bottom is just showing some integrations with our add-on marketplace and Zapier as well too. Next thing I wanna look at is just the chart of accounts. So we created a chart by default for you. Um, you can change this. Um, in any, as, as you need to, um, you can add add other ones in there if need be. I'm just going to import one in here. Let's just browse for that for a second, and I'll show you how we can do one. And let me just. Uh, 
Okay, so it's not a perfect chart that I've got. This actually belongs to one I've been playing with with a self-made super fund. Um, so I'm going to just ignore a couple of these uh, these things in here. Um, so I can untick ones that I don't want to come through, for example. Um, so then I can just import that into the system. I can just click on import. Uh, sorry, I need to choose my mapping first and then type and status. And then I just click on that, import the file and I'm good to go. I can done and so that's now there I've got an updated chart with all those extra extra accounts in there so it is quite an easy way I can import that in uh, you can make that whatever you want uh, within there as well all right now that's just going through gone through the setup side what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to swap um, swap with my books here where's my other one here let's go into the Jetsons one that I've got and I'm just going to look at this one and we're going to look at some things like some contacts in here. So first of all, let's go into the contacts area. So you can see I've got a number of contacts. This is, I've swapped the names on this. This was the Flintstone Trust as well too. Uh, I've got my contacts. I've got ASIC there. I've got the Bedrock Bank. I've got dividends and distributions, Fred Flintstone. Um, I've got investment trades, miscellaneous pebbles, so forth. So I've got the accountant in there. So to add a con adding a contact, I'm just going to click on one of these, say Bedrock Bank, for example. When I've created the contact for Bedrock Bank, I've ticked the box that it's both a customer and supplier because I have interest income and then I might pay a bank loan, that sort of thing within them. Um, I can also put in and verify an ABN. That's um, verifying with Reckon, so it is a good way. And I can see that they're registered GST. I can fill in details around addresses, phone numbers, email addresses, and that sort of thing. So it is quite a um, quite a simple um, contact uh, from within there. I can also record the bank details for that one as a supplier as well too, if I require. Okay. Just going to go through and do a, a receive money. Let's have a look at that now. It's all basic sort of uh, sort of stuff within within here. You can see I've already got some information already sitting in there. Um, if I want to do a manual receive money, I'll just click on the add. When did I receive that? Let's just say on the. Let's just go back in time a little bit. Uh, back in January, and the contact was uh, as a dividend and I can choose how it was paid. I can put in a reference in there. Uh, let's just say BATP, for example. My bank account has come up there. I've put that in there now. And then the other case, I don't have an existing transaction. That's more for the when I've got invoices and bills and that in there. So just go over to the new tab. And I, and I can just choose the account that I want that to go to, dividends received, and I can put in the amount that I received for that dividend, for example. So a simple and easy way to do that. I can go save and new, save and close, or just save. So save. So that's now added that into the, the system for me. I can also go over to my uh, make payment. And I can very easily add one in there. I'm just going to click on one that I've already created, say the accountant bill. I can add that um, that one in there. I've just put that under the new as well. Um, <clears throat> All right. Now, just going to before I go in and look at the, the, the banking side of how we sort of deal that with that uh, with core with our bank feeds, I just want to. Go down, have a look at a couple of other things. Here. First of all, we've got items on the left-hand side. Ignore projects because we're not talking about the projects module today. Um, items, if you want to add any items in, so you can pick them up when you're adding a um, adding a, a receive money or doing a bill or whatever it might be. Um, so if this is a basic, it's just a small um, selling widgets, for example. It's a product or is it a service? 
it's something I sell for, uh, let's say, ten dollars. What's the income account that I normally would post that to? And I can just give it a, a description. So when I cheers that on my received money item, for example. So now if I was to do a receive money, you've got the option of choosing that item. I'll just go down to the new tab. I won't actually create one, but you can see on the add new row, the Let me just fill that out. What's that doing? New, there we go. Choose the item. There's my widgets available to me there, and I can put in that I sold two of them or three of them, whatever it might be. Uh, the other option just around those items, just uh, before I move on from those, is just the ability of when I add an item, it can be an item that I uh, buy. I'm buy and sell. So buy and sell, it tells me I bought it for this and I sell it for that. So that's where you can use that on your make payment and then you receive money. Okay, just going to quickly look at journals and I'm going to touch on banking reporting, BAS, and then we're into questions. So um, in my journals, if I want to add a brand new journal into there, I can choose the dates that I'm doing that at. So let's just go back and let's just do a 31st of December. It's got a summary automatically when it was created. You can do um, uh, 20, for example, half year, 2019, 2020. And if I wanted to, I can then go through and pull in what was what was the income and expenses in that um, first half of the year that wasn't on Reckon 1, for example. So I can easily fill that data in. There's adding row, debit, credit, and of course, with any journal, of course, it needs a balance at the end of the day. So, if... all right, going into the banking side. So we've got our bank account. So bank accounts, we, as I said, when you create a book now, it'll create a my bank account in a petty cash uh, by default. Um, I've got my the investment account on there. If I want to add a brand new account, I can click on that and let's just call it savings, for example. You can choose the institution. You can fill out this financial institution detail if you want, or you can just leave it as the savings account. If it's a credit card or anything, you can add that in as well too. Um, if you are bringing in prior year figures or comparative figures, that sort of thing, don't worry about filling in the opening balance because then you're going to cause conflicts on that side. Now, with any bank account that you've already got open as well too, like the ones that I do have uh, here, I can always edit those. And this is where that one that says my bank account, you can change that name. If it's a, an account you're no longer using, I can click on that to close that as well. So it is, it's uh, pretty straightforward uh, to do that. Now, with the bank account, as everything gets recorded, if I click on this and I go, it takes me through into my Reckon one transaction to show me the, this is that one I did in, in January just before. It's showing me that because it's recorded into Reckon one. Now, rather than having to go to receive money, make payment all the time, I can do a manual upload of bank statements if I want to. So it allows me to then quickly and easily allocate things as I need to. Uh, I'm just going to bring in a, a newer file than, than that one there. All right, let me go here. Let me go back one. Let's trust. And let's just pull in this QIF file that I've got there. You can do a CSV, QIF, or God forbid a TXT. I've never even tried a TXT. Don't know how that one would look. Um, I always prefer a QIF over a CSV because I don't have to do mapping. Um, that's probably because I've got other transactions that are will be replaced. So because I'm just using a demo one, that's final, but do that's fine, but do take note of that if it ever says that. Don't bring in a new month until you've finished allocating the prior month uh, within there. So I've got my core in here. Now with this, I've imported my bank data. And what I can do is I've got rules that have been created. So I've got rules for interest coming in uh, already, some dividends. 
So it's picking up that. So I've got that come happening automatically for me. So that makes my life easier. So it's not limited to actual live fees coming in. As long as there's a bank bank coming in, you can easily do that. Creating that rule, I just click on the create a rule. And then I just give it the option of what I want to call it. So I want to look for all of these words and we'll go to bedrock bank and I'll choose the bank charges. I can choose a dollar amount or a percentage. So I've always got to add up to that. Now that's allocating a few more of those uh, within me, within my file, within here. So I'm accepting that auto matched. Um, I can allocate a receipt. So this is just a, a, a rental payment coming through. I can just go straight away there and I can put it to, uh, where's my rental income? I don't have it sitting there. I can accept that. Simple and easy. And then that's then allocated there. And I can work my way down. Same with the, um, why haven't my things come through? That's weird. My file hasn't worked properly. Very odd. So it's just a matter of working my way down and um, through that. If you want to know more detail on the banking side, I do recommend uh, it's actually on in a, uh, an hour and 20 minutes, the bank data webinar. John's going to take you through that one as well too. Um, the same principles on the allocating and reconciling and that do apply on that one as well too. So yeah, it's, uh, my file for some reason didn't have those coming up. Interesting. And then there is the option of uh, the fast coding option. If you want to know more about that, join the bank data webinar and the reconciliations matter. Adding in the closing balance, the closing statement date and doing that, that um, reconciliation. Under the, on the left hand side, I've got the rules, transaction rules. So this is where they all appear. If I want to make any changes to any of those, I can pick up those and I can I can grab those, edit or whatever I want there. So that's where that's applying uh, for me. So let's go and have a look at some of the budgets uh, within here. Now I'm going to, just going to create a brand new budget within this one. And uh, let's go 2020. It can start it from a blank budget or last year's actual amounts. Don't have any data for last year, so I'm going to start from blank. It starts at the um, the income side, and it gives you that option of when I expect to, the in money to come in. So I expect $100 of distributions there. Um, might be another 100 paid there, so forth. And then in July, I might expect say 500 of dividend income, another 600 in October, uh, and as I need to, an interest. So with the interest, because I'm getting interest every month, rather than typing in one, two, three, I can click on change values, set all to the same value, increase by percentage, decrease by percentage, but I want to set to all the same value. Let's say that $10 every month into the interest received one there. So I can then apply that and that now appears across those ones there. And then if I skip into the next six months, I can see my interest received is showing uh, within there as well. Same would happen on the expenses side. I can go and add in any expenses um, if need be. If I change that out, we can see a few more uh, within there. So, so that's how I go through and I can create that budget. When I save that, and if I add a new budget now, I've got the option to use a previous budget as well too. So budgets are quite a powerful little tool within there. Let's have a look at the report center. So we've broken down this into a number of categories. So uh, financial banking, analytics, customer supplies, but the main ones from a core point of view will be just on that financial side. You've got your P&L balance sheet, trial balance, account inquiry, or general ledger report. I've made some a favorite, so they appear on the left hand side. And one thing I love about Reckon One is I can right click anywhere in the software, uh, say on budgets, I can open a new tab, receive money, open a new tab. I can even do it on my generate of my reports, open those in a new tab. Now, because we didn't allocate much off the bank statement, there won't be much uh, sitting in there. Uh, let's just go, I'm just going to make this one all date so we can actually see a wee bit more data in there. 
and I can compare that to a budget or a prior year or a prior period or anything that I want in there. I've got more options, so I can change that if I don't want the code to show. Um, I can see a dollar variance if need be. I can alter from from accruals if I want to see that. Um, and I can do a refresh. So, so just remember with the chart of accounts and that, something about Recon 1, we don't actually need to have account codes in there. It is quite a nice little feature. Export to PDF, CSV, XLSX or RTF. And one thing I can do is on any of these, I can actually drill down from the profit and loss it takes me down to the general ledger report and I can further drill down to the underlying receipt as well too. And the other way that as we're talking about the drill down, if I go to the dashboard, I've got a lot more information in this particular one and I can actually click on that ring and that actually drills down in the profit and loss report. So you can see how powerful that is to allow me to do, to do that or quickly and easily to work my way around um, all of that within there. Okay, so a couple of other of the reports that might be of interest. Um, banking, this is where I can find my bank rec and bank statement report. Analytics, um, so we've got things like sales by item. So we've got a few that can come up. Our budgets appear there. We've got our list of, list reports um, as well too. Okay, last couple of little things is the T part. So if you do needing to have T part, if you've got a supplier that is on um, for T part, so let's just go back and click any of them. You'll notice when I'm on a supplier. Uh, let's just say R1 Advisors. We've got this subject to T-Part, I can tick that. I can tick that at any point. So if I realise I forgot to tick them at the end of the year, I can go back, tick this, and all their payments will come up. When I'm doing the report and creating the report, I can actually unselect um, or deselect uh, some of those payments. If that one wasn't meant to be subject to T-Part, I can remove that. So it creates T-Part and it will then, um, you can then create the file to lodge as well. One thing I forgot about on the reporting side, let me just skip back there for a moment. If I go down under, where am I? All right, look. Interesting. Oh, this one might not be registered for GST. Yeah, so this one's not registered GST. Let me just quickly alter that. Sorry, my apologies. Register for GST, cash. Yeah, that's fine. Another report that will be appearing in here, and this, because I wasn't registered for GST, with that, I was unable to show you that part. I was looking for my tax report, so they weren't showing up. Um, so I'm just going to skip back to that that journal. Just um, wanted to bring your attention just to one other thing. So when I said that earlier, that amounts include tax or not, this is if that's not ticked, you don't have the option to change this. So I might have a non-tax journal. It might be a, a gross journal, whatever it might be. So let me just put in other income. Let's just say eleven thousand or one hundred ten thousand. That'll do me. Um, just because I'm wanting to quickly add a bass in there for you. Accounting fees, let's just say. Uh, and let's just go to the bank account. Let's work that out for me and just go save and close. Okay. Apologies about that. Now, when I go back into my reporting, let's go to the report center. I now have my tax report showing. This is where I've got a GST summary. I've got my tax code transactions and I've also got a tax code exemption report. So my GST summary will show me uh, just my basic GST summary side. So very different to the BAS as because as, the BAS will bring in other elements, of course. This will show you tax code transactions of what's um, under particular codes. Um, and I didn't put GST on my um, 
accounting fee so you can see that there so if I need to make an adjustment on that I can so let me see Jack so when I want to do my bass click on bass I'll set that here up uh, all right Thank you for bearing with me on this one. Okay, add the bass. And I'll leave it at April or June because I know that's where my journal is. I can put the document ID in there. If it is an amendment, I can do that. Um, you can see there's my sales, got my uh, other acquisitions and all of that. There's my bass. I won't, can't be lodged for me in here, but I can mark this lodge, add a receipt number in that as well too. It can be emailed as well. So your clients can email it for you to verification and that sort of thing as well. So that's the that's the basics of, of core and how that all looks. So what I'm just gonna do now is I'm just gonna go and open up over to the, the questions um, side. So if we have any questions, oh, actually before I do that, um, just remember, so, if you have questions, just go to slido.com, type in R1 Core and as the event code, don't have to sign up or anything. It's just available there. Add your questions. I've got a couple of um, questions coming through I can already see as well too. Um, the Rack and Training Academy is available. If you haven't ever looked at that, signed up for that, it is a great resource. Uh, just go to the main page of reckon.com, click on more, select training from the drop down. Sign up, then you log in and you can view recorded webinars, how to videos, workbooks, more. You can do the Reckon One certification, it's free. Um, and of course, we've got the YouTube channel where we post our recorded webinars and how to videos as well, too. So this will end up there. We'll soon see our JobKeeper payment stuff as well. I know we're not talking about that in this particular webinar, but I will mention it to everyone um, in there as well. Don't forget, we've got the Reckon Help Center as well. So step-by-step -step guides at help.reckon.com. Knowledge base of kb.reckon.com. And of course, joining the Reckon community as well too, um, community.reckon.com. If a lot of you might be already across them, if not, um, it's a good resource and it's also a good refresh for everyone. So as I say, let's go to Slido. I'm gonna go into some questions. So we go slido.com, don't have to sign up or join, just type in the event code and click join, and we'll uh, um, I'll then go and have a look at those. So let me go here, and I've got a couple of questions coming up already. So you can see those up on the screen there. So John's asked, is it possible to make an account postable for the client, e.g. super expense? The client keeps posting super payments there instead of the liability. Um, funnily enough, I was actually just talking to a friend of mine about this last night with theirs, and it's not just a problem we have in Reckon 1, it's across a lot of them there. Um, the, it is something we do have had come up a lot there, but at the moment we can't do that. You have got the option of whether you want them to um, do all of the, um, how much of the reconciliation that you want them to do. You could set rules up, of course, on super payments, because the super payments going to a clearing house, if you set up rules, then therefore they're not actually going and physically doing the posting yourself. You're taking that control of where that um, is being posted to. So the rules saying post to the super payable account. So you could do, you, that's an option uh, within there as well. Uh, with the recurring, With the recurring payments or recurring entries in core, this client has doesn't have the invoicing module. That's actually a good point that you make there, John. I will follow up on that because I know we've got the like recurring receipts, um, recurring payments. So it is um, it is an interesting one as to what the mindset is there. I know it's on the the invoices medium, so I will um, I will ponder on that one and I'll I'll ask the question of the um, of the team uh, within there. And the profit and loss um, on a multi period showing each month. Um, I started reckon five years ago, and I was, I was sort of it was um, something I started asking for back then. We've had a few things like STP and all that that have hiccuped. It is something that we do want to do. Um, definitely want to bring it in there. It'll be fantastic. Uh, 
but at the moment um, we're just we haven't done it yet we're um, just trying to work out the best way we're, we're looking at redesigning the whole reporting engine at the in reckon one so hopefully we can um, sort some of that out um, when we do actually uh, cater for that as well so yeah do watch this space um, on on that and hopefully we can have that uh, sooner rather than later for you all because I know a lot of people would like to see that it would be a great um, great report to have uh, so they're the questions I have at the moment um, if you do uh, think of anything else afterwards as well too just always feel free to drop us an email at training at and we can uh, we can take care of that for you um, one of the one of the um, one of the customer success managers, myself or John or Savannah, will have a look at that um, and get back to you as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but I want to thank everyone for attending. Um, I'm just I'll wait here if you, if everyone needs to go. I know it's uh, we've got to finish a, a wee bit early there. Uh, just a leaving leaving time for questions that sort of thing. Uh, if anyone needs to go, that's perfectly fine. If um, if you're joining for the bank data webinar in just over an hour's time, John will speak to you all then as well. John from our team, um, he's going to take you through that. Um, if and as I say, if anything comes up um, in there, I'll hang around here just for a moment. We'll see if any more questions come through on Slido. I'll just bring the Slido uh, screen uh, back up just so if anyone has questions, uh, they can. They can click on that, go to slido.com with the code, type in your question, um, and then we can um, we can have a look at that there. But we'll I'll leave it, at, put it there. I hang around for a moment. Um, I want to thank everyone for attending and uh, have a great day. But yeah, I'll I'll wait for a moment or two. All right, so it doesn't look like we've got any, any further questions coming through at this moment. Oh, here we go. Sorry, John, one more. Um, you should be, uh, even the debtors and creditors accounts, you can, can post it. You've just got to assign a contact to all of them. So whether that was what it was doing for you, John, because, um, yeah, you should be able to post to any of those. Um, in there, so yeah, I wonder if that was the case. Whether it was whether it was the debtors or um, debtors or creditors that you were trying to post to, John. I've got your uh, got your details there, John, because you are the only John on the line. So what I can do is I can always touch base with you uh, out. So this and we can have a look at this. Yeah, that's all right. It could have been the GST. That's fine. Um, we can have a bit of a play. That's all right, John. It's a it's a good question. Um, yeah, the yeah, I'd even need to go and refresh myself on that one. So I might have a play and I'll touch base with you outside of here, John. So. All right, so as I say, if anything comes up, just email us at training at reckon.com if you think of something afterwards. Uh, we'll get this video uh, uploaded as well too. Uh, hopefully it's recorded successfully for me. Um, and then, but yeah, if anything does come up, um, let me know. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to go and end the session in, in a moment. Um, and Oops, let me just go back here. And want to thank everyone for attending. Have a great day. Uh, hope to see you around at some of the webinars later on. Um, and hopefully we'll see some of you face to face in the hopefully not too distant future. Future, but everyone hopefully stays safe as well too. Uh, thank you very much. I'm going to finish off now and have a great afternoon. And we shall see you soon. Thank you very much and goodbye.